struggling to edit your videos? If so, you have landed in the right place. Because today I'm going to take you through my video editing workflow on Final Cut Pro using an easy 7 step process. Hey, I'm Andy, filmmaker and creator of Project GoPro, an online video making school specialized on helping people make better videos using action cameras like GoPro. So if you're still struggling to edit your videos, stick around and watch this condensed version of my full editing workflow until the end. You'll learn how to prepare your content for editing it, how to build a story, how to work with soundtracks so that your videos not only look good but also sound good. Then we'll see how to color correct your videos, add titles and transitions and much more. Now if you want to access to the uncondensed version of my full video editing workflow, there is a link down below to a 3 hours course deep diving into my entire video editing workflow with Final Cut Pro where we go beyond the basics and learn all the editing tricks I use to make my edits even more engaging in less time. Plus you get all of the sample footage and editing assets used during the course so you can practice every step along with me. But now, without any further ado, let's get started. Organize content for editing. Okay, now so the very first step uh, after shooting is, you know, when you come back home, you want to reorganize your files before you start the editing. This part is very important um, because it saves you time later on during the editing process. So to do that, you just need to, you know, get the SD cards from your cameras and plug them in into your computer or MacBook. Or if you have an adapter, you can use the adapter that connects to your MacBook or you can even connect your cameras to your MacBook and download all of your files to your computer. Okay, so now let's jump right into my MacBook. I'm gonna share the screen with you guys so you can see. So the first step is to download your files into your computer, but not to a random folder. That's why I always suggest to organize your files, you know, in a nice organized way so that later on you don't have any problem to find your, your clips to and to do a, a fast editing. Here we've got our SD card. These are GoPro clips coming from my camera. I renamed them like this in order to have them even more organized. So all you need to do is to copy Ctrl C or by going here, copy 40 items. That's the number of clips I've got into your MacBook. So, um, but we don't want to do it randomly. So what we do is find somewhere in your computer, on your MacBook, or even on a external uh, hard drive where you want to keep all of your project files or all of your editings. So in this case, I'm going to use my external hard drive and create a new folder called, let's say, video making. So then inside video making, we want to keep all of our event folders. What do I mean by event folders? Let's say today I did a shooting, so today will be my event folder. Tomorrow I will do another shooting, I will go out, let's say, you know, to the beach and uh, film a little story out on the beach with my friends, that would be another event. So for this I would create my event folder. So I would also number them. In this case, I put 01 and backpacking, backpacking through the, through the Philippines. This is my event folder. That's how I want to call even my, my video project files. You go in and you create another folder and actually another three folders called unedited This is where we're gonna put all of our content, unedited content, so like copied from USD cards. And, uh, and then number two, we've got editing. That's where we're gonna put all our editing files, including the Final Cut Pro uh, files. And then last one would be export. Our exported video will go here. Inside unedited, if you have different cameras, videos coming, video clips from, coming from different cameras, I would suggest you to sort them by camera. So in this case, I will create uh, GoPro. Then I've got, I don't know, Sony, my Sony camera, my iPhone, and then I would have my drone, for example. If you only have 
one camera, then you, know, you don't need to sort them, obviously. You can just put all of your footages in unedited. After that, let's get into these folders. So in here, then I would copy and download um, my video files from, from the cameras. You might want to rename all of your clips like I've done here. To do that, you select them all. So Command A to select them all, right click, rename all of them at once. So you have different options here to rename them. You can replace text, add text or format. I like the format one because you know you can rename all of them at once and put a number after the name. So in this case, I rename them GoPro uh, clip and then underscore and then start numbers from one. In, this is an example how your GoPros will be renamed. GoPro clip number one started from one until number 41 in this case. Uh, your Mac will rename all of them and it's easy in this way to, to find them even later in the editing process within uh, Final Cut Pro. So then we go ahead and download all, all of our files inside these folders. After doing that, you would like to um, go into editing and create another folder called uh, 01 Final Cut Pro X files. This is where you're gonna save your project files from the video editor. And then after that, in this folder, I would create different folders uh, where we want to put all our extra content like music, uh, transitions, titles, or anything that you're gonna use inside your edit. So for example, here we can create a folder called soundtracks and then transitions or titles etc that's it in the export one we don't do anything because this is where our exported video will go in the end import and preparation all right so after um, organizing your video files your content we can open up final cut pro x I assume that you already got it in your MacBook. If not, go and uh, download it. It's one of the best software, to be honest. I've used this for years now and, uh, and I find it great. So once you have the uh, editor open, the first thing to do is to import and prepare your files for the editing. And now, because we've got limited time here, I assume that you already know how to how the editor interface works, where to find all the tools and etc. So I'm skipping that part for you know for this time. And uh, however, I I cover all of that in my full video editing course that you can access through the link down below. In the course, of course, we have more time, and I can show you in details. Uh, all of the interface, all of the tools one by one, the most important ones, how to use them and properly and how to make great edits with all of these tools that you have. Now is where we're gonna actually start to have some fun because we're gonna start to do our edit. So open up the uh, Final Cut Pro, go and create a project. We go to File, New, project before creating a project though we need to create a library because um, this is how you know a project is organized when you create a new project in final cut pro you need to create a library first which you have event an event or different events inside this library and then you would have your projects one or more so uh, we go ahead and click on library into our folder and editing here, Final Cut Profiles, and we wanna save it inside here. After that, we can create a project. You don't need to create an event for it because you know Final Cut already creates an event for you, which is this one, uh, but not a project. That you have to do it yourself. So go to File, New, Project, Call the project as you want through the Philippines and in here you can select the video settings so the format resolution frame rate etc I'm gonna leave it as it is because uh, basically this is are the settings of your editing 
there are not settings for your exported video files. Those will be done in a different part. So you can also use automatic settings. If you use automatic settings, the editor, so the timeline, would get the same settings of the first clip that you import in your timeline. In this occasion, I'm gonna want to select the same um, settings that I want to use for my exported file. So 180p, it's okay. The resolution uh, 1920 by 1080 and 30 it's it's okay for my project so hit okay uh, the timeline pops up but it's now empty so we want to fill it up with our clips and then go and edit them before doing so we want to import our video clips audios and anything that we would like to use in this project within the editor in this section here to do that I'm gonna go to my media and select all of my Go GoPro clips. Actually, I can even do it, I can even import the folders which contain my video clips. So I'm gonna actually do that because it's faster. So drag and drop them in here in this section. Final Cut Pro will process them, It'll take a little while based on how many clips you are importing. And we can see now that under clips, we've got 52 video clips. All right, so now we've got all our clips inside the video editor here. They are ready to be imported in the timeline. The next step is to actually build our story to make a story while you edit. Build a story. This is the fun part because this is actually where you're going to select the clips which are going into the timeline. You're going to cut them, you're going to trim them, add music and, you know, and sync them with the music. So. Usually the first thing I do, which I also suggest you to do, is to add the music first, is to add your soundtrack. And then on the soundtrack you can you want to build your story. It's hard to cut your videos first and then adapt the music after. It's it will take longer. So a faster way is to actually put your music, find the beats, you know, the beats of the music, like every two seconds, every second, whatever, and then put some markers and on those markers those will be your points of reference where you can actually start or end a clip let's have a look how this is done in final cut pro i will get the music as i said i'm gonna use this this song hariko that i found on youtube audio library that's where you can find free music if you're just starting out and um, so let's take this song hariko put it in here in the video editor and then with, by just dragging it down into my timeline, you can see that I've got my song, my soundtrack in here. Let's play it back, identify the beats, and with the letter M on the keyboard, I would put a marker on the song. Let's see. Okay, I want that to have a change there. even here of course you don't want to change all the time on the click because otherwise it will be boring so you know maybe some of these markers can go and so on so you hear the song until the end and where you want things to change, you press M, put a marker, so then later you have a reference. I've already done this part, so let's um, go and take the soundtrack that I previously marked correctly as I wanted. I go back to my video clips here, and now I want to take a few of them and, and put them into my timeline. So now we want to add our media within the slots, so let's go and take uh, the Sony clips first because those are the ones that I want to use first to introduce my, my film. So I'm gonna find them here, Sony, type into the search bar. And because I organized and renamed them before, so now you see 
it's easy to find them in an organized way. So let's take all of these clips that essentially just go at the beginning. So I'm going to take them all, select them and drag them onto my timeline. So now we've got them into the timeline. What we need to do next is to trim or cut them in order to fit these ones in, in chronological order within these little slots that I've created before. So you can either trim them from the edges or cut them and use the blade tool or just simply press by pressing the letter B on the keyboard of your Mac. Again, all of this is, I explain all of the tools, where to find them, how to use them correctly within the full video editing course. What I want to do is to select just a little part. So I'm gonna take the blade tool, delete this part, put it here, and then cut it there. So you see, Okay, that's okay, just a little bit. You don't wanna show it too much. Just want to show when it beeps, it should beep at some point. So yes, let's uh, cut it just before the beep. Let's edit the next clips. I don't want to trim this clip because I wanna show the whole movement, which is quite nice. Maybe I'll uh, trim a little bit this from this edge and then what I want to do is to speed it up. So I click here fast and we speed it up by four times. Let's try it four times, maybe a little more. Sorry, a little less, so 350% to fit it within the slot. Okay, that's cool. Try to fit it here, let's see how it looks. We'd like to remind you this flight is scale your one number six all right i also would like to keep the um, the voice of the captain that is talking so what i do is to detach audio so i keep my audio separate even if i cut my video here my audio will still be here we'd like to remind you this flight is scale you one number six mount for quick Again, you know, all of this I go into detail step by step how to do every single thing in the full editing course. But here, because of time, we don't have much time in this video, so I'm gonna go quite fast. Please stay with me. So the next one, the next thing to do is to um, trim the next clip. I think this is, yeah, this is nice. What a stupid face I've got. <laughs> okay, so like just wanna show that I'm eating, so just a little bit should be enough. I'm gonna continue and do this, now I'm gonna speed it up and otherwise it would just last forever. So add all of your clips into the timeline like I've done just now. Try to fit them within the markers that you sell that you put on the audio track. Uh, do like so until the end until basically you either run out of your clips or the music ends first so your clips would continue up here if that's the case then you would like to put you want to put another soundtrack when this ends or maybe copy a part of this like so for example this is just an example copy it and add it here if that matches you know the previous one After this process is finished, you should have all of your clips on top of the soundtracks. Here I've you know, already made a little few adjustments which I'm gonna uh, show it to you right now because in this section uh, you're gonna learn about sound design. Sound design. So sound design you know, is quite underestimated by many people because they just focus on the videos, especially when, you know, when they're starting out. And, um, they don't know a lot of things. So like sound design, I believe, you know, is 50% in the importance scale for a video, sound design is 50% uh, important 
it's not only about video because you know imagine watching like a movie without sound or without sound design nicely done um you know it would look it would sound very bad like so your videos must sound good in order to do that other than having a good microphone a good like audio recorded audio ready you should also kind of pay a little attention when uh, when you do when you edit a video also try to edit sound as well as you know add sound effects at the parts where they can enhance the story so don't overdo this because then you know if you do this too much if you add for example too many sound effects it would it wouldn't sound nice so just try to balance it i'd like to show you also where to find music for free online you can find free music in the as i mentioned before in the youtube audio library i think for this you must have a youtube account a google account if you go to into you know your youtube studio then go down here audio library you'll find free music which you can select and download for free or also soundtracks the library is quite big but it's still kind of limited so because of that especially if you got like paid gigs or things like this uh, and or you want to increase the quality of your music of your edits then i would suggest you to get a membership in one of these two sites um, this is not a sponsored video I just like I've used them in the past and I also use epidemic sound right now so it's you know I suggest them because they are nice they have a lot of artists inside and uh, they cover a lot of different uh, music types and soundtracks as well as uh, sound effects so yeah epidemic sound and art list shout out for them good job guys so Let's go back here after getting your soundtracks and putting all of the videos on top in a nice way with cuts on the beats. Now you can do a little bit of audio design. So like understand where there is voiceover, like in this part, you don't want to have a background music too high. So you need to lower the volume a little bit like I've done here. You see, this line is zero decibel which is like as it was recorded and then i uh, lowered the volume down to 21 decibel all the way until here because here i think there was a voiceover or the guy was talking let's have a look you'll be able to get it yes nice okay, you can then here starts again The music goes up again because this is like an action scene so it's nice to have good music in the background um, that you can hear very well and on the parts where there is voice you just lower it a little bit like here again how do you do that by pressing alt on your keyboard you see when i press alt this plus uh, icon appears and then you want to uh, click here and then next to it again and then drag this part down you see you can create sections by adding points and then you know lower or higher these sections the volume of these sections it's very simple so let's have a look what I've done here. Here there is a voiceover, as you can see, it's detached from the video, but it's down here. So here I had to lower the my music a little bit in order to, you know, to hear what I'm saying. Up again, down again, because I'm talking. The name. Here again there is an action so the music goes up. From here, from this button, you can monitor the audio and the audio levels. So you basically don't want the audio to go over zero decibel, otherwise it would be uh, too high. And in that case, you need to lower it down a little bit. 
Uh, also here, for example, you see these, the, the top ones, these spikes, the top ones are like kind of red or yellowish. That's really the limit because you can see that if I play here, it gets to zero. And the more it goes up, the more the, it would change color. So it would get to red. We don't want to have red here. Otherwise, the, that, mean, that means that the music or any audio would be too high. You want to limit it, you know, maximum to zero or even less. So in this case, I would, you know, put a minus two decibel. Check it again. And it gets maximum to minus two decibel. That's a good audio level. So yeah, try to, um, uh, even here, this is too high. I'm gonna put minus, minus four, minus two, should be okay. Try to identify if you've got audio that looks like like this. That goes over the limit, just like lower it down a little bit. Balance it with all of the clips that you've got and, sh and you should be good to go. In my full video editing course, I cover this part, the audio design. We see how to do different things, how to add effects, audio effects transitions on the different audio clips uh, so like check it out if you want the full version of this now the next step would be to actually go and do some color correction color correction just remember that color correction is different from color grading so color correction is just you know adjusting uh, the levels of the exposure as well as, as the saturation of, of your videos it's a pretty uh, simple process it won't take long time but unlike this is different from color for uh, color grading color grading is where you actually make the aesthetics of of the video of your movie it's where you change color tones color, different color tones and to give a different style or mood and that takes time and skills so we're not going to cover this at this time if you want to learn more again check out the full course down down below and, uh, but you can always use, you know, presets or LUTs, video LUTs. You can apply them here. We've got them at Project GoPro as well. Uh, I think you can find also, I'll put the link down in the description if you want to check it out. Uh, these LUTs are basically presets that will change the mood, the colors. So the mood and style of your videos just with a click without you going to like, you know, changing the colors, check if they're okay, if they look good, etc. So you just you would just use these files. They are basically filters, like like Instagram filters, but for videos that you can use on Final Cut Pro. So basically, what I would do, I would check your every single clip from start to end, and identify the ones that are maybe out of exposure and need some rebalancing. Uh, for example, this one is very bright. You see, like it's really white here. It's, I think it's burned. I don't know if we can uh, put the highlights down here because it's too much, but let's have a look. So in Final Cut Pro, we get to the color board with Command 6. We get access to the color board, go to Exposure, select the clip you want to edit, and let's try to adjust the exposure for the highlights. Bring it down a little bit. Yes, you see? Before it was kind of like that. And now if we bring it down, we can see more color popping up here. So that's uh, that's a good balance. I, I don't think we can go any further. Yeah, that's the limit. And actually to see it on a graph and to actually see what you are doing, you can go here and show the video scopes, get the scopes. Basically the scope gives you an indication where you know where your limits are for the exposure as you adjust the exposure the graph gives you a different indication basically you don't want to go over uh, the zero you don't want to go under zero and you don't want to go over 100 if we adjust the shadows we can bring up or down so give more or less intensity to, to the shadows by adjusting these cursors here see how it looks also on the viewer but also consider uh, these two 
limits. You don't want to go over these two limits. So that's that's it for the video scopes. So I would do this process for every single clip, you know, and if I see that the colors are out of balance, I would balance them again. Maybe this is too dark. So what I would do is to uh, adjust the mid-tones a little bit to make it brighter and also a little bit of shadows. And I would do the same for every single clip. So that's how you adjust exposure. Now let's have a look to the saturation. So if I also realize that you know some clips are undersaturated, maybe maybe you shot them in flat in GoPro flat color, and you want to add some you know some more co color, you go here to the saturation tab, and you add more or less saturation. You can add it all, like all at once with this cursor. You see this results more like the colors will be more vivid or you can give less saturation so that that will look more desaturated so depending on your preference you can adjust this accordingly try to make them look similar and you don't want to have you know clips very saturated and then the next one is under saturated yeah this is to balance them all Cool, so you see how easy and simple this process is, so have a look if you've got something out of balance, try to balance it with exposure and saturation. After saturation, we got the color tab here where you can edit the colors, you know, of your videos to give them a different tone. So I wouldn't touch this too much because, you know, otherwise it, it's quite hard to, to, to use this. If you're just starting out, I use this part to change, to increase or decrease my temperature on my videos. Say if some of the videos were shot um, and they were too cold in temperature, then with this one you can add a little bit of warmth by just you know selecting, going to this part of red, between red and orange and adding a little bit of warmth to, to the clip. Or you know, if it's too warm, then you can do the opposite. So go down and give the clip a, a cold feel by doing so. But yeah, don't mess with it too much if you're just starting out. Otherwise, you know, it would you know mess up all the color levels or on different clips, and then it's difficult to to match them again. So that's about color correction. Now the next step is to put some effects, like titles or transitions. Titles and transitions. Like I've done here previously. So basically, you see, like you want to start, when you start a video or your story, sometimes it's nice to put, you know, text on screen or, you know, to, to support the, your videos. And to do this, it's quite simple. So you just go and add the title by going to titles in this section click here, you will see titles, open it up. You will have some default titles that Final Cut Pro provides. Let's try this one, basic 3D title. You can just drag it here in the timeline and adjust it, adjust its length. And then if you select it and go in the specter, you can change all the settings, like from the color, the font, the sides, you can change the text, uh, for example, new title. And so this is a good way to add value to your videos. Put in titles like I've done here. And also transitions. I wouldn't use transitions too much, but sometimes they help to convey the story and to give like a cinematic feel, a cinematic effects. So you can find transitions by default. Final Cut Pro has some of them. They're, they're quite nice as well. So you go here on this icon, click on it, and there is tra all transitions that you can see, cross dissolve and so on. So I use cross dissolve quite often on my edits, not on all, you know, don't use it on every cut, but sometimes they're nice. And also 
fade to color is quite cool. Okay, so here we got our clips and I want to add a transition between uh, this clip and the other one. Let's see how it looks without transition and see how it looks with a transition. Without is just like that, simple cut. I'm going to add a transition. These are our Final Cut Pro transitions that you can find together with the full course. Uh, so let's uh, let's take the zoom in transition that I like a lot. The zoom in transition, we can just drag it here and make this very cinematic. Boom. Let's see how, how it sounds as well. Let's go back and see just this part, how it looks with the transition and the music. Boom. Cool. All right, so after uh, adding effects, doing some audio balancing, audio design, selecting our clips, putting them in the right spots, the last step would be now exporting and sharing our video export and share but before doing so what i usually do is to um, review everything from the beginning so you would have to go back and play it back and see where you know you can improve this footage before to export it you can also show it to a friend or you know to anybody uh, for a feedback there is a good way to even like improve yourself because you're receiving some feedback maybe somebody would tell you at ah, this you know maybe it looks too long or looks too short or maybe the music is too high or you know like little feedbacks that maybe you didn't you didn't see and through this you can improve it so yeah watch it again do some polishing and then it's time to finally export and share your video. So once you've got everything here and it looks good, then we want to go ahead and share the video by clicking here on top and go to master file. And here, this little window pops up. You can change the title, description, whatever. But what you're interested in is in the settings. So this is the most useful part because then, yeah, the infos, you, these are just the titles and stuff like that. So here you can change the format. So there are different formats where that you can adopt to export your video. Video and audio, that's what I select most of the times. And then video codec keep H264, that is good for most, in most occasions. So after that, go just hit next, choose where we want to export this and um, we want to put it in the organized folders that we created before. So that would be in video making, backpacking through the Philippines and export. Then save it and, and then Final Cut Pro will process and share export your final video so you can see its progress by clicking on this icon go to sharing and you'll see that now final cut pro is analyzing transcoding everything and exporting your final video so that's about it that's how <laughs> you edit a video with final cut pro step by step if you want to become a pro in video editing and learn more advanced editing techniques like removing video noise of your footage shot indoors or in low light, how to add a letterbox effect to make your videos even more cinematic, learn how to make time lapses from stills and other cool stuff, then click on the link below and check out my full video editing course right now. And that was my seven step editing workflow with Final Cut Pro X. And I really hope that you found it useful. Now you're ready to start editing your videos and actually have fun while doing it. As always, if you have any questions, just let me know and I'll do my best to answer everybody. Stay healthy, keep creating, and I hope to see you inside my training program. Ciao.
be our tour guide today. Yes. Nice. Swim. See? Thank you. Mm. Tisa. Tisa? The name? 